educators, trainers. Today we had Madhava, our extraordinary Kirtaniya, sharing rhythm. Yesterday, Shameshwari was sharing dance. And so please do come for those workshops as well. And then, of course, the Kirtan. Our next Kirtaniya is the one and only Indra Jumna Swami Maharaj. He is the inspiration and the main organizer for this festival. Indra Jumna Maharaj travels and shares bhakti kirtan all across the globe. He's been doing so for decades, all, we can say half a century. He's been sharing these teachings as he received them from his teacher, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Prabhupada's picture you can see on the wall here. And in the late 1960s, early 70s, Prabhupada asked Indra Jumna Swami to take these teachings from the US to Europe. And so he was one of the pioneer uh, teachers of bhakti in France and Belgium and Italy and Spain and other European countries. In the 80s, he started traveling to the USSR incognito as a disguised as a businessman uh, <laughs> to go and share bhakti underground there because it was not permitted at the time. And then in the 90s, he was sharing kirtan and bhakti yoga in South Africa. And that's He still continues to travel there to this day. Each year, it's part of his itinerary. And the Amazon jungle, as far afield as the Amazon jungle, Australia, uh, across the US. So Indra Jumna Swami is a global Swami, a global teacher of bhakti. He organizes massive festivals across the globe as well. For the past 32 years, he's been organizing a summer festival in Poland that lasts for a month and a half. 200 volunteers traveling along the Baltic coast, sharing, organizing festivals each evening, uh, six days a week. And they're attended by thousands of people each evening. We have hundreds of people each evening here, Polish festival, thousands, up to tens of thousands of people each evening, a big stage, theater, dance, music, you know, very entertaining stage program. And then in the US each year in May, there is Sarusanga festival, and that is a kirtan festival that's attended by two and a half large festivals where he gets lots of people together to share the joy of bhakti yoga, to share the joy of kirtan. And so we are very privileged that we have the opportunity to sit with him now for the next 45 minutes as he will share kirtan and maybe speak a few words before he starts that as well. So please, a very warm welcome for Indigun Swami Maharaj. When I hear these eulogies, I think, I'd like to be the person he's talking about. <laughs> very happy to be here with all of you, very happy that so many of you spiritual seekers have come. It's like sometimes when you get on an airplane, a specific company, and they're starting to fly somewhere, they, they come on and say, thank you for choosing our airline <laughs> to go to this particular, you have so many choices. So I, I know you have <clears throat> many choices <clears throat> here in Rishikesh, this holy abode. It's been such for many millennium. Many souls have passed through here looking for spiritual enlightenment. And during the kirtan last night, how many of you were here last night for the program? Yeah, it was really nectar. <clears throat> I was thinking, they have that saying, it doesn't get better than this. So I would say in an absolute way, in a, in a spiritual absolute way, it doesn't get better than this. Why? Well, they have a saying amongst the rishis that live in the caves and the yogis who live in the mountains. An interesting phrase, they say, uh, something can be perfect, it can be more perfect, and it can be most perfect. 
So when I first heard that, I couldn't make, what does it mean? <clears throat> something's perfect, something's more perfect, and something's most perfect? So I figured it out last night. It's perfect that we're sitting on the, literally we're sitting on the banks of Mother Ganges. She flows from the celestial abodes down through the earth planet. She actually continues, according to the ancient teachings, goes down to the lower regions of the universe, the lower planetary systems. And all along the way, she's purifying uh, the souls who come in contact with her. <clears throat> it said if you take a bath, I know it's cold, you take a bath in the Ganges, she cleanses you of more karma than you can accumulate in one million lives. One bath. That's not an exaggeration. So much karma. So we're sitting on the banks of, of Mother Ganges. That's perfect. <clears throat> What's more perfect? That we're like a spiritual family. We've all come to Rishikesh for the same purpose, for spiritual enlightenment. There's different ashrams, there's different practices, there's different techniques, but basically, we're all here for the same reason. We're here for spiritual enlightenment. Um, there's a saying, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastakoi, Lavamatta Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. That in the association of like minded spiritual people, it's very favorable for spiritual advancement. It rubs off on everyone who's there. So we're all encouraging each other here by being together for the same purpose of spiritual enlightenment. So that's more perfect. So what's most perfect? That we're chanting this mantra. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. The rishis have a saying, Maha Mantra. Many of you know, you're all yogis, you know there's many mantras. And each mantra has a particular specific benefit. But the Maha Mantra is all-encompassing. Whatever benefit you may get from each particular unique mantra, it's all there in the Maha Mantra. And it's a special benediction for this age. You could say almost a concession for this age. It's said that Vishwamitra Muni, he's a great sage, you know, millions of years ago. <laughs> And he attained enlightenment by sitting in the ice flows of the Himalayas for 60,000 years, chanting, Om, controlling his mind, controlling his senses, not eating too much, not eating too little, not sleeping too much, not sleeping too little, per perfectly equilibrium, peaceful for spiritual enlightenment. It took 60,000 years. But the um, acharyas or the great teachers of today, they say that the benefit he achieved after 60,000 years can be achieved by sincerely chanting Hare Krishna for one week. I mean sincerely chanting from the heart with a, a desperate plea to become spiritual enlightenment. And Krishna gives his mercy and one can become spiritually enlightened. So it's a powerful process. Very powerful, very purifying. And the ultimate goal of chanting is to awaken the bhav or the love that's covered in our hearts. We have deep love for the divine. It's, it's been there forever and ever and ever, but it's covered over by our experiences in this world. It's like you take a bath in the morning, by the evening you're covered by the dust and the dirt and the sweat. So in our sojourn through this material creation, uh, birth after birth, we become covered over. The soul becomes dull. It's described in the Gita. Like a mirror covered by dust, by fire covered by smoke, and by the embryo covered by the womb. They're covered by dust, by smoke, and by the embryo. So we're, our soul's covered. We're not really who we're supposed to be. My guru said one time, the soul is more brilliant than 10,000 suns rising simultaneously. So you look in the mirror tonight. <laughs> but that's our natural position, to be glowing, to be effulgent, to be happy, to be in bliss, to be in love. 
because love is our natural condition. That's why everyone wants to love and everyone wants to be loved. And that's bhakti. That's the topmost rung in the yoga ladder. You go up different steps, different types of yoga. The topmost is bhakti or love because we want to love and be loved. And Krishna is the perfect lover. We can love two or three or five or ten people, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead being the creator of everything material and spiritual, he can love every created being to their full satisfaction. And there's never a sad story like Romeo and Juliet. If you want a perfect loving relationship in this world, it was Romeo and Juliet, but it ended. It's a sad story of material life. But in spiritual life, when we awaken our love for the divine, for Krishna, and we go back to his abode in the spiritual world, it's love ad infinitum. Love reigns supreme in the spiritual world. And that's where we belong. Because we're not these gross material bodies. Beauty is only skin deep. What's the real beauty? The real beauty is the soul within. So enlightenment means to wake, wake up that soul. Wake up the soul. So how do you wake up somebody when they're sleeping? With sound. Somebody can be oh, deep sleep. How do you wake up a sleeping person? With sound. Or come on, time to go to work. Come to get up and go to school. So the, the soul which is slumbering, being covered over by the material energy for so many lifetimes, it can be awoken through this sound vibration. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Sama, Hare. And when you wake up, what will you see? You'll see yourself. You'll see yourself. You'll see yourself as a spirit soul, as a spiritual person. And you'll see the supreme person from whom everything's coming. And you'll realize your intimate, loving relationship with him. Krishna can be the dear most friend. He can be your son. He can be your lover. And that's all through this very simple process of chanting Hare Krishna. There's much to be gained. And the first step, even that usually in the yoga practice, you have to wait lifetimes to get some little glimmer. It's so hard to get detached from this world and become enlightened. You have to like really work at it. After many lifetimes, the yogi, he begins to realize his deeper spiritual identity. But in this process, from the first time you chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare, you have a spiritual experience. So much so that when you're chanting and you're relishing the chanting, you want to dance. When, when do strangers dance together? Only when they go to the disco or the rave and they take some intoxication and only then they can let go and, and dance. It's all artificial. We're from all different countries of the world. Literally, we're strangers. But when we come together, we're all joyful. You look at the next person, other person because it's raising us to the transcendental platform. We're all one spiritual family. It's amazing, this mantra. So just while you're here, take full advantage. Chant, chant, chant. Put your arms up in happiness, and when it gets to the point where the kirtan gets a little faster, don't be a wallflower. <laughs> don't be a wallflower. If you dance, people will appreciate. They're not going to think you're strange because that's what we do. This is, our, this is the process for spiritual enlightenment and it's not like Vishwamitra Muni in the Himalayas. Anyone anywhere in the world can become a fully realized yogi by singing, by dancing, by hearing a little kata, a little philosophy to weave it all together and make sense of it. And then in the evening, a delicious 10-course vegetarian feast. Who would not accept such a process of enlightenment? <laughs> and you can take it home, and you can do the same thing in the privacy of your home or with your friends, or you can go anywhere in the world, because it's not just something, you know, you do 15 or 20 minutes in the morning or in the evening. It's all day long. You can chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare no. So they've asked me to chant. This evening, <clears throat> I'm not like Sri Pallad. <clears throat> I'm not like uh, Badahari. I'm not like Gauravani. He's the next act. 
You know, big bands, <laughs> they always put on a, a band before the big band, so I'm the little band. <clears throat> but let's chant, and please give it everything you have and make a quantum leap in your spiritual progress this evening. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare.
Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare 
Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, H
forever. Это 